Good morning, friends. Welcome to another episode, the thirty-second episode of the story of the storyteller. Friends, few days back, we have seen a lot of by-elections across the country. There were by-elections in Karnataka too, and an assembly election in Bihar. So first, I will talk about what happened in Karnataka. There is not much to talk since there were no issues, and it was it was all about money, money, and money alone. Two constituencies, Sira and Rajarajnagar, went to polls. According to estimates, people who were there on the field. In Sira alone, the BJP has spent more than 60 crore people, 60 crore rupees in the election. Rajarajeshwari Nagar too is not far off, where Mr. Muniratna of BJP has spent crores and crores of money by giving free STP boxes and you know a lot of money, liquor everywhere. In Sira and Rajarajeshwari Nagar, there are reports that. Six thousand rupees per family was paid. Nearly two thousand rupees per vote was spent. So I will not talk much about these two elections because the ruling establishment, the corrupt ruling establishment, used money to buy voters and all the second level leaders of different parties. Friends, when we come to Bihar. It's a story of so near, yet so far for the Mahabharat Gathbandhan of RJD, Congress, and the left parties. Like it happened in so many states, like Goa, Haryana, now even Maharashtra to a certain extent, where Congress and its allies came very close. to winning but due to so many factors lost the elections by a whisker same thing happened in bihar my dear friends where mahabat gathbandhan got 110 seats nda led by bjp and jdu got 125 seats until the first phase the mahabat gathbandhan was riding a roller coaster but something happened in midway in the second phase and the final phase if you see the phase one result nda got 22 seats mahabharat pandan got 47 seats nearly double more than double something happened in the second phase wherein nda got 52 seats and mahabharat pandan got 41 seats somewhere i felt that mahabharat pandan lost its fuel in the third phase they didn't put enough effort in the third phase in the third phase when you see nda got 51 seats while mahagat pandan got 22 seats third phase 83 seats were the areas of north bihar and simanchal where there is more than 30% of muslim population this is an area where rjd and the mahagat pandan should have done better but when we saw the results this is where i feel the mahagat pandan has lost the simanchal and the north bihar now when we look at vote shares nda has got 37.9% and mahagat pandan has got 37.2 or 37.4 percentage of votes there's not much mahagat pandan in fact has got equal number of votes as as much as nda has got for example RJD has got 21.22.1%. Congress got 9.5%. Whereas the left has done extremely well; they got 4.6%. BJP got just 19.5%. JDU got 15.4%, and all the two other parties, HVM and VIP, got around 3%. When you add these two, the total percentage of votes is 75%. That means where did the 25% go? If you look, why Mahagathbandhan lost? Mahagathbandhan got just around 37% votes. That means 63% of anti-incumbency votes were there. 
out of which Mahagat Bandhan got just 37.4%. The remaining 25%, a huge chunk, went to smaller parties like AM, BSP and all. LJP got around 5.6%. Lot of smaller percent uh, parties which got 0 0.6, 0 0.7 and all. This clearly shows somewhere down the line in the run up to the campaign, the JD, RJD and the Congress were unable to consolidate the anti-establishment vote, the anti-Nitish and the anti-Modi vote. This is where I feel that Mahagan Pannan has lost. In a nutshell friends, if you really see the difference between NDA and Mahagarbanan, the difference is just 15 seats. According to an estimate, more than 11 seats are won with a margin of less than 1000 seats. There are a lot of seats which are won by 13 votes, 50 votes, 60 votes, 100 votes, 200 votes like that. So 15 seats is the difference ultimately. Only if Mahagarbanan had done its homework properly in the caste combinations, and doing proper social reengineering, wherein it took all sections along with them, they could have easily won these elections. If they had just flipped seven to eight seats away from NDA, they would have won these elections in a platter. Now, let us look at you know uh, what is what was the caste combinations of Bihar. Muslim Yadav combination was around thirty percent, where Yadavs were around thirteen percent, and Muslims were seventeen percent. And in the third phase, Simanchal and North Bihar, Muslims were 30%. And that is where Congress and RJD has not done that well. And that is where we have lost these elections. Upper caste are around 16%. EBC, or most backward classes, are those OBCs minus the Kurmi and the uh, Yadav. They constitute to around 36 to 38%. Dalits constitute to around 16%. Now let us look what happened, what went wrong, uh, what did Tejasvi Yadav and Congress not do right? See, they had a very good combination of Muslim Yadav combination where they had 30% in a platter. But it is the EBC, 38% where they failed to consolidate. Another important factor is small caste in EBC, like Nishad. For example, we have seen that you know Nishad community, fisherman community, they are around 2 to 3 percent. There was a new party called VIP led by Mukesh Sahani. It was a game changer, in fact. He, con he consolidated all the fisherman Nishad community towards them. They are part of the EBC. Like these small, small communities within the most backward classes, they consolidated the Yadavs while Kurmis went with uh, JDU. But the EBCs, economically backward sections or most backward classes, MBC as they call, they are not consolidated properly by Tejasvi Yadav and the Congress. When you look at the Dalits, Dalits basically you know you can call them Dalits and uh, which constitute to Dushad, they form one third of the population. That is the community which uh, Paswan and uh, his son Chirag Paswan belongs to. They form one third of it. That means out of 16%, they are around you know, uh, six to five to six percent, you can say, five percent. But ten percent, ten to eleven percent are Mahadalits. Mahadalits are represented by whom? But by, by that you know HVM, Manja and all. They made a difference. That ten percent Mahadalits, Tejasvi and Congress never concentrated. In fact, uh, they were with uh, our coalition in 2019. They went to Nitish. Paswan, the Dushats went away. So, we didn't consolidate a section of Dalits towards us. So, I feel these two sections like you know the Mahadalits and the EBCs were responsible for our downfall and we didn't do enough to gain their support. So, in short, EBCs were not consolidated to an extent that we had to consolidate. Those EBCs who were anti-establishment, who were anti-Nitish and anti-Modi were not consolidated. The Mahadalits also were not consolidated. Hence, Mahagbandhan's combination of Muslim Yadav didn't get the vote share that they should have got. With the 30% strongly with them, easily their vote share should have been more than 40-41%. But they fell somewhere 3-4% to short. They could have got a Kushwa in. They could have got a Manji in, HVM. They were all part of uh, 
them or they could have striked an alliance with BSP which got 1.6 or 2 percent or an AIMIM. Friends, I am in fact astonished. In the state of Bihar, we are nearly 50 percent are OBC, 17 percent, you know, 13 percent Yadav, 37 to 38 percent other OBC, EBC is what we call, 50 percent are OBCs plus 17 percent are Muslims, 16 percent Dalits. That means 33 plus 50, 83 percent are those communities which are traditionally with Congress and RJD and the communists. If we are not able to get a winnable majority, I think something is wrong with our strategy that our uh, leaders of the Mahagat Bandal uh, took, uh, did in Bihar. Friends, let us look at OSC. People tell OSC, AIMM. Every political party has a right to contest. How can we stop OSC from contesting? Tell me. Any damn party can contest anywhere. I don't subscribe to the view that, you know, he, he is a vote katwa or anything. Yes, if you look at the figures, it has happened. I don't deny it. But how can we tell, you know, Mr. OSC, don't contest? In fact, I would rather uh, tell the people who voted OSC are at fault. I will tell you the reason why. Just look at, my dear friends, where did we lose? We lost, we lost in Simanchal where Muslim population is 30, 30%. 30% around, you know, our OBC will be around 45 to 50%. 80% is our population. Along with Dalits, it will be somewhere around 90%. If that area we have not done well, and in that area BJP and Nitish does well, then who is to be blamed? All our leaders who were on the ground to take care of the elections are at fault. Here, this was an area where we should have done well. The, and this is the area where we have not done well and we have lost an election by a whisker. Just imagine friends, Lalu is the biggest savior of the secular parties. He was the one who stopped Ratyatra. He was the one who, was, who stopped Advani's Yatra. He has consistently, he is a socialist who has consistently been with secular parties. Most of the others like Nitish has played a ball to BJP. Lot of parties. BSP also has played a ball to BJP. But it is only Lalu who is the savior of the secular parties. And he has been in jail. He has continuously fought the BJP. But what have the minorities in Bihar done? Few. I don't blame all minorities. What have you done? If you had a problem with Congress, at least looking at Lalu's face, at least looking at RJD's face, you should have worked, you should have put all your votes to the Mark Bandhan. When the CAA and our NRC came, you were the people who went to the streets, you were the people who fought Modi, we all supported you and when the time came for you all to teach a lesson to Mr. Modi, you few of them voted for OAC. Now what will happen, whether if you have voted to OAC, that is your right, I am not telling you, but what are the implications of your vote? Don't you think that you should have voted with tact? Do the upper caste also behave like you? Why will they consolidate? Why can't you consolidate? Okay, you have put your vote to OSC. Let us for a minute understand. After putting your vote to OSC, what has happened? Has OSC got so many seats as to stop OBC, stop BJP from coming to power? No. Who has OSC helped? He has helped Modi and me, he has helped BJP. Now what happened to your vote? Is your vote for BJP or anti-BJP? By voting OSC, you all have indirectly helped Modi and Nitish Kumar. Now whom should we blame? Should I blame OSC? I don't blame OSC, I blame you all. My dear friends, another factor which has hit the Mahagat Bandhan is, they took on, all of them took on Nitish, but they failed to take on Modi. That is where if you see, Nitish suffered, but Modi gained. We somewhere fought Nitish, but we didn't fight Modi. One man who could have fought Modi and put his pants down was Kanaya Kumar. Somewhere I felt that my friend Kanaya Kumar was not properly utilized in this election. If at all Kanaya Kumar was proactively put in the front as the face of the Mahagat Bandhan, along with Tejasvi Yadav, along with Rahul Gandhi, Kanaya Kumar would have done a fantastic job in taking on Modi and bringing to the people all the failures of this Modi government. That is where I felt that this was a strategic 
loss by not projecting Kanaya as one of the phase of the Bihar Margat Bandar. Friends, we all failed to get the people to the booth is what I felt. There were 37% of the people who voted for NDA. That means there were 63% who didn't want to vote for Nitish and Modi. But we got only 37%. That means remaining 25-26%. We failed to take them to the booths. Moreover, the voting percentage also was very low, 56%. In an election like this, the election voting percentage should have been somewhere around 60-65%. That is where I feel the Mahagat Bandhan not only didn't consolidate the people, the anti-establishment vote, but didn't bring the people to the vote. In, a, in, a, in, in, in an election against the establishment, it is very important for the opposition parties to gather people and bring them to the vote. To the vote. If you look at these uh, seats that we have lost by 1000 votes, just imagine there will be 300 to 4, 350 to 400 booths in each constituency. 400 booths divided, 1000 divided by 400 booths means 2, two, two to 3 votes. If at all we would have converted 2 to 3 votes in each booth, that would, that would have been a different story. If at all we would have, con we would have brought 5 to 6 people in each booth, uh, in each, uh, you know, that ward or booth to the polling booth, and made them vote for us, our job would have been very easy. Friends, there is no use in crying uh, in, in crying over spilt milk. I would like to end that Bihar got the government that they deserve. I congratulate the people for their choice. But all those deprived sections like EBCs, Dalits and the minorities, you had a chance to change this government. Now you didn't utilize this chance to change this government. Now for the next 5 years, you don't have a right to crib against Modi nor against Nitish. Because it is you who decided where you want to vote, whom you wanted to vote. You have voted and the results is all there. Bihar has got the government it deserves. Now all the minorities too. You all got the government that you all deserved. You all voted for OSC but that didn't make any difference. The only difference it made was, it helped BJP to get more seats and we fell short by 7 to 8 seats. If at all, you all helped us to get another 5 to 7 seats and if we would have flipped another 4 or 5 from the India side, today you all would have gone, got your government. Mahagat Bandhan is your government but today NDA government of BJP can never be your government. You all missed a glorious opportunity to have your government is all I say. Jai Hind.